Alrighty, so let's go ahead and talk about the special skills each of these ranks have. Um, again, I, and I, I know I say this every single time, I'm actually using an older version, so um, even though it says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., um, in this version of these pieces that I have, the 1 is actually the higher one, um, and 9s are the lower, but I'm going to be referring them to the newer version, so uh, 1 is a 10, 2 is a 9, a three is an eight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They go down to the nine, which is a two in the newer versions. So each piece has a special skill. So some of these skills require that they use actions to use them. So as long as you have the actions, you can use them. But again, actions also count as your movement and your attacking or climbing up the mountains. So first things first is the one or the ten. So the 10 has the ability to intimidate. That's a special power. By using one action, the 10 may intimidate any unit up to three adjacent spaces away in any direction, including diagonal. So, and I'm just gonna, for the sake of this here. Now, normally, if this were a normal game, the 10 wouldn't know what it is uh, attacking here. So, but in this version of it, the 10 can go ahead and he can use one of its actions, again, assuming that he had them, and he can freeze this piece. It doesn't work on bombs or the flag because they can't move anyways. Um, the only thing is, is that, well, um, you don't reveal what the piece is. So, if this were an actual game, and I was the 10, or the 1 in this case, and I said, well, I'm going to use my Intimidate action, I'm, I'm going to free you. This person, this this guy playing here, doesn't have to be like, okay, well, you froze an 8. Nope, he doesn't have to do that, he just, it stops right there. He goes, okay, you know, I am frozen. However, the thing is, is that... <clears throat> is that an enemy that is frozen, it may not move or attack, but it can still defend, but will receive a minus three. So even though um, this you know guy would, would have been super weak because in the other versions, he is a three himself. And by the way, this minus, they cannot drop below zero. Um, and so this guy here because sorry uh, this guy here because he is a three in the newer versions of this um and he receives a minus three his rank would be zero now don't misunderstand he can still go ahead and roll what he gets on his on his dice here he just wouldn't be able to receive any extra bonuses based off of his rank so that's what the 10 can do here i'm trying to think or not think, but I'm trying to look at it here because I originally had it. They could only do this three times, but then I changed it, and I think I think I kept it. Oh no! It says yeah, the ten may perform this move up to three times a turn, so you can only freeze up to three um, enemies here. Uh, again, that's based off of if you have the actions. So you know, I rolled a six here, so chances are I could probably use my freeze three different times now um a piece cannot be frozen twice in a turn so i can't be like oh i'm gonna intimidate you once and intimidate you so you know you're out of the game or this piece can't move for the next in two turns now you can only freeze or intimidate one piece at a time so um and then the other thing is assuming that the piece is not dead so let's say i went ahead and i and I froze that 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 uh, that I ate there or that three. Um, then, on the player or on the uh, next guy's turn, he can't move that piece. Um, but then that piece will no longer be intimidated at the end of his turn. And so his next turn, assuming I didn't freeze the piece a second time, um, when it comes back to my turn he can move that piece and do anything that he wants with it. So again, uh, you can use it. I mean, even, even if this piece were here, again, you can, you can, you know, move it and do this way. 
what what you can't do and this goes for all the pieces here you can't make you know some l shape so i can't you know be like oh i go up one two three no no it needs to be in a straight line for it um that's the only rule and that it actually goes for all of the pieces so that's that's what your one does it intimidates which it freezes and a frozen piece cannot move and receives a minus three to their defense a nine has the power and we'll probably bring that eight back here in a minute the nine has the power and this only goes for an attack the nine has the power to receive a plus one to its attack um, based off of any of the numbers that are next to it so if there are and it can only be uh, with a maximum of plus three so so let's say that this is what is going on oops not a a uh, nine I'm thinking of sorry this would technically be a two but in the in the new versions um, the two is the nine so if there are pieces and they have to be adjacent so I mean and it has to be right next to you here so it can be in left right up down or diagonal I want to make sure that my notes are saying that's right it should be um, yep yep okay um, they receive a plus one with a maximum of plus three so even though this is a nine because he has one here he's, he's now a plus 10 11 12 so he is coming after this after this eight here or in this or if you're doing the new um like the new rank system it would be a three so he's coming after that three with 12. again it has to be that the pieces are adjacent to it uh, that's that's that is the is the only rule to it the other thing as well as um it doesn't work for if he is the defender he still has to rely solely on his on his rank he doesn't get any of the extra ranks it's only for the attacking rank so we'll go ahead and move move him over put these guys back in the order they're supposed to be in we'll get to them when we get to them and so the next thing here is the three or the eight so the eight has advanced knowledge <clears throat> and you can using using an action again it takes an action any unit within two spaces not counting diagonal in this case so so you know if this piece is here this this would not work it's only up down left left right you can use one of your actions and say i want to know what this piece is and as an action they have to say okay well it's an eight and that's it you know there's nothing else to it now there are a lot of these that like even though maybe you aren't actually attacking someone for instance with that one with this you know with this three here or i should say the eight and the ten even though you're not technically attacking someone you have to be careful with it because you you know like if you use this 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 advanced knowledge here then your opponents can be like oh well that's clearly an eight like i know what that piece is so you know you gotta make sure that you use your pieces or your special skills where you can uh the next one is a four which is a seven in the um which is a seven in um the newer uh versions of this a seven can snipe and um, and again, let's let's go ahead and turn these guys around here. I'm just kind of grabbing any piece that I can. So a seven can snipe. Uh, a seven um, can attack anyone, and this is not counting diagonal. Can attack anyone one to two spaces away. Now, if they attack someone who is one who is one space, that person can still delete. De to defend as normal and can possibly win if they're attacking someone who who is who is farther away well then that person cannot fight back even if their rank is a higher a higher um rank here so let's let's go ahead here and bear with me let's say that this is another seven that i am going to attack here 
Again, if it is a tie, nothing happens, but only if it's another seven that I am attacking. And let's say that, you know, just, just for the sake, and I'm just gonna assume that I'm not on this desert tile. You know, I rolled a one making my total attack eight, uh, eight because I'm a seven and they rolled, um, I don't know. Anyways, they rolled a three making their total attack a 10. Because they are the defender, and it's a 7, because they can snipe you back, they technically win. Now, let's say that this was any piece besides a 7. Uh, so, a, any piece saying it's not uh, a mirror match. Uh, and if they rolled higher, nothing happens to both sides, because I'm sniping them from one space, or sorry, from two spaces uh, way here um, and I, I'm showing this here because you don't have to have a clear shot you can snipe over someone this also goes for your ranks too so you can you can attack someone who is behind another piece so let's go ahead here and let's say that we are we are back on the mountain here. So first, so first things first, a seven does not have to use two actions to attack up to attack up the mountain. The exception to the rule is, is it has to be right against the mountain itself. So like it couldn't be on this fort here and try to attack. No, it 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 has to be right up next to the mountain for 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 this to work. Okay, that's the only exception. And the same thing goes here. Let's say I am trying to, uh, I am a seven here and I am trying to attack someone else and this other seven here still beats me. He has to be right up against the mountain itself to win. Because if this guy were here and I try to attack him onto the fort and he, and he wins, well, he doesn't have enough range to attack me up the mountain because he has to be right up next to it. I'm hoping that makes sense to you. Um, so, again, a 7 can snipe, but there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, one of the things as well, um, <clears throat> and of course, um, let's say... Here, let's go ahead and do this here. Um, let's say that I'm trying to trying to snipe someone on a forest tile because it's a forest tile and all the specialties negate. Nothing happens. I, I cannot snipe someone on a forest tile. <clears throat> or if this were switched, I cannot snipe someone from the forest tile. Now, I could still fight someone who's right there next to me, but I, I couldn't attack someone or with a long range snipe from the forest tile. Again, forest tiles negate special moves. There are some exceptions and we will get to those. So I definitely hope that that makes sense um, in terms of what the seven who is a sniper, what they can do. So the next one here um, is your six or in this version is a five. Um, so they are aware of their surroundings. The only thing they can do is they, as a six, they can move diagonally and they can attack diagonally. The only exception to that rule is you cannot, <clears throat> is you cannot attack or move into an enemy or uh, into a square that is a forest tile. You cannot use your special action, which is moving in a diagonal way or attacking in that same way into a forest, a forest tile. That's the only thing that they do, and that's what that is. So your next one here is a five, which is a six in this old one, and a five. <clears throat> They don't receive any disadvantages 
on desert or on ice. And so if they were attacking someone from this desert spot, they don't have to roll the dice twice. If they are attacking or defending on this ice, they don't receive any of the minus threes that, um, that work with it. Um, also, they don't have to they don't have to use two actions to attack onto a mountain, but if they're on a mountain, they still have to take two actions to move from the mountain. Um, and then um, as you're trying to move off of a mountain, and I don't think I said this I, in my video explaining what all these do, it doesn't take any extra to get off a mountain. It just takes a normal one. It's only climbing onto the mountain um, that takes the extra two. And so um, they still have to take two actions to climb onto the mountain if they were just climbing on um, or moving. But if they were attacking someone who is on a mountain, they don't have to use two actions for it. That I, I, I definitely hope that makes sense. So again, they do not receive any of the minuses to the ice. They don't have to roll the dice twice and take the lower and if they are attacking only on the mountain, onto the mountain, they don't have to use two actions. But moving onto the mountain or moving through the mountain still takes two actions. Next, we have, um, you have a seven or a four in, in the new games. They have the ability to leap. <clears throat> so, um, so first things first, um, the four can jump over over each of these tiles as many actions as they have. So let's go ahead and roll. He has two. So I could potentially one, two. So sorry, he was here. So one, two, and he comes here. So you can skip as many squares as you have actions for. Um, the rules to that is you cannot land in a lake that's still off limits but you can jump over the lake um the lake does count as two actions so like if i only rolled a one i could not use oh well this is one so i jump over no it still has to be one two and then you jump over it you cannot either um leap onto a guy and attack on the same turn um if there's someone in your way well sorry because like you have to use a separate action to attack after you have leaped um, there are some other rules to it. Um, <clears throat> uh, four cannot leap over and onto a mountain, um, and they must interact with it as normal. So again, if if the four here, four here cannot jump onto the mountain, it, it must interact with the mountain as it normally would. And then finally, if a four can land into a forest, but it cannot leap from a forest. So, trying to just look at my notes here, make sure I got everything. I believe that is is it um, in terms of what this piece can do. So again, you know, with the four, I wrote a three, so I could potentially jump over three of these of these squares here now i couldn't because that would lead me right back to this lake which i can't jump over but let's say i could i could jump over this so i can one action two action three actions so you know each each action um will cover one of these and i could potentially land here as a result so that's what that guy does so let's look at the minor the miner is pretty much still the exact same piece. Um, it, I, I mean, again, um, it diffuses bombs. That's its main its main goal, its main purpose here. Uh, it diffuses bombs. Uh, it can diffuse bombs on on uh, a forest tile. Um, and the other thing it can do is it. Um, the other thing it can do is it can move on to a mountain without having to use any actions. However, trying to, again, attack up the mountain 
still requires two actions. The only exception to this rule here is if it were a bomb on a mountain, then the miner doesn't have to use two actions to defuse that bomb if he's not on the mountain. That's the only exception to the rule is if it is a bomb. Same with if the, if the miner was already on the mountain uh, and so with the bomb, he doesn't have to take two didn't have to take two actions to get to it or, or to try to defuse it. He can only um, just use the one action. Only can be bombs. But again, getting on the mountain or moving through, he doesn't take any additional actions. But attacking any piece besides, besides a bomb takes two additional actions. Um, so, or two, two actions, I guess I should say. So that's what the miner does here. Um, the nine or the two, so I'm just trying to move some pieces out of the way. The nine or the two still works the exact same. There is literally nothing different. They can move as far as they want and attack in that same turn. They can move left, right, up, up, down. That's it. They you know act the same way as a two um, or a nine works. Um, there's nothing else different. Um, they still have to take two actions to go up the mountain. Um, in fact, let me see if I have any additional rules here. <clears throat> Tomb still plays the same at any point in direction besides diagonally. Moreover, they may attack with that movement. Uh, this does not require extra action, but still require two actions for moving on and through um, and attacking on mountain terrains. If the two doesn't have enough actions to interact with the mountain, they can still travel as far as they can, but will stop next to the mountain tile. Uh, may move through forest tiles without worry. And so you could potentially, you know, move all the way up here, but it is going to take two actions to move on and through the mountain. Again, the mountains, there's a lot of rules to it. <laughs> Uh, because it takes extra actions to get on and off it, or not uh, off it, but on and through it. So, again, um, the two can go here, but let's say they do have enough. Well, it does take additional actions for every single time that you go on through it. And so, you know, let's say I wrote to roll five. Well, then that's one action, because I got as far as I can go. And that's additional two more actions, so that's three actions. And if I want to go here, additional two more. So, so that's all five of my actions. Now, let's say I only rolled a one, and I was here. Well, I don't have enough actions to get onto the mountain. Heck, even if I rolled a two, I don't have enough because this counts as one, and I don't have enough to get on here. So, long, long story short, probably having a nine or a two going on a mountain is probably not the best option, but it is an option nonetheless. That's why there's only oh, it looks four four mountains here. So it is uh, it is up to you. So let's go ahead. Let's talk. Let's talk about the spy now. So the spy again, when they're attacking, if they attack first, they win no matter what. Besides, if it is a bomb. If the spy is attacked, it will lose no matter what, okay? The spy also has another special uh, skill they have called secret plans. And the spy can, can, um, I'm just looking at my, my notes again here. Um, <clears throat> the spy can either aid uh, a fellow piece or they can also, uh, hurt uh, a uh, enemy piece. So what I mean is, and this takes this takes actions here, any piece that is um, adjacent to the spy, and let's not use that one, let's use this one. Um, any piece, and sorry for that kind of wobble, um, I'm using this as one, as one hand as uh, I am, and I'm trying to move all these pieces here. Um, so, uh, as an action, the spy can help or hurt, um, depending on what it does. So, if it is helping, it can give a fellow, uh, a fellow piece 
an additional plus six. So you would roll here. And so, you know, I got at six plus the one is a 10, that would have been a 16. Now, you know, let's say that it got a higher, you know, so I, I got a, you know, that's a 10 there plus another 10, and that is a rank of 20. You know, that's that's huge. That's super helpful, you know, of what it can be. So you get an additional plus, uh, sorry, you get an, a, an um, additional six. And uh, to hurt, um, the spy can take away an enemy's uh, six. And so if this if this one, and again, this is assuming they're not on this on this ice tile here, um, if this one were to attack uh, this this uh, four or this ten were to attack this seven that um, lost its 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 dice here, then the highest that person and the only number the person can get is this um, is a seven that they are or the rank that they are in this case. So which is a seven, um, and so I. And, and so it, it, it really it really is it, it helps out a bunch the only exception to this rule is it cannot be done diagonally um, and then and then any bonuses or minuses will um, will go back to normal at the end of your turn the person's turn so like you have to act with on that turn that is the only thing um, the spy may also use this, um, may also use this, um, on a forest or mountain tile without worry. So again, you know, the spy could, could be here and say, well, I want to make sure that, that guy loses his D6. Well, you don't have to take any extra actions for it. You don't have to, you know, do anything extra with it. Even if it was like this, you know, he still will go ahead and he will lose it or if the if the spy himself is on the forest and you know that's that's still totally fine so can use it